Let's start first with this election. How are you feeling? We're 19 days away. Where's your head at, Dr. Gorka? I'm not going to tell you how I feel because I don't want to have the experience of uh, 2022 or 2020. I'll just quote uh, the great Rich Barris, one of the few pollsters I actually trust, who says, the trend lines are moving in the right direction. And also uh, Mark Lauder, my former White House colleague who was on my show yesterday, who said, if you look at the figures now and take a snapshot, President Trump is significantly ahead, not only of where he was this time uh, during the election in 2020, but even in 2016 against Hillary Clinton. So we fight like we're the third monkey trying to get on Noah's Ark. We've got three weeks left, left to go. We take nothing for granted because they've been stealing elections since Joe Kennedy bought the votes of the dead for his son, JFK, in 1960. Uh, we fight, fight, fight. And if I, if I only do one thing right now uh, for all of those wonderful patriots listening, if you haven't gone to TrumpForce47.com and become a captain in the president's force to mobilize other voters, you're basically working for Kamala. So TrumpForce47.com, TrumpForce47.com. They give you the names, the phone numbers, the emails of 10 Republicans around you, and you just have to call them up or send them an email. You can win this for the president. He took a bullet for us. Now it's time for you to send a few emails. TrumpForce47.com. Only a man of great empathy would think about the welfare of the third monkey. You know? No one ever, Think no about one ever that poor third monkey. That's what I'm saying. He got it. He got it just he was so close. He was so good, just slipped right off at the end. Get oh, that every ramp. animal Get had to go. That ramp. <laughs> um listen, I like how you handle that with facts. So there are two facts. Uh he is ahead of where he was in the last yeah. two goes at it. Go at it. And uh momentum is on his side right now. Just, just the, the timing of the polls or whatever. Right. Yeah. So right. yes, the trend line. Yeah. So th those are two facts. And we got to finish up. I like that a lot. Uh, tell us about your wife and what is happening in Fairfax and the voting rolls. Yeah, unbelievable. So uh, Katie, who hates politics because she's sane, um, after four years of doing various different things in the community, is now the chair of the biggest county for the GOP in Fairfax. So she's the, the chair of the Republican uh, Party for Fairfax County in the biggest, biggest county in Virginia. And uh, she released a press statement as chair yesterday morning that you can read. Uh, it went pretty viral. It got her on Newsmax last night with uh, Greg Kelly. The uh, Biden administration, along with the Women League of Voters, which is a wicked Democrat. Organ it sounds so innocent, like all of these do, but it's a mm -hmm. wicked Democrat uh, propaganda arm. Both the uh, women, League of Women Voters and the Biden DOJ are suing Governor Youngkin and the state of Virginia because he removed thousands of illegals from the voter rolls. He identified them as illegals, removed them from the Virginia voter rolls, and 20 days before the election, <laughs> the Biden administration is suing the Commonwealth to put illegals, non-citizens, back on the voter rolls, Mike. Okay, so... Let's steel man this for a second. <clears throat> so I believe this the reason the feds want to put illegals back or any, anyone back on the voting roll that may have been taken off is because the law says you can't clear the voting rolls within 90 days of the election. Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're using a technical argument that this was you know, this was done too close to the election, which is like, why would my response is, why would there ever be a time limit? on removing illegals from the uh, election voter rolls. If you found a million illegals on the voter rolls one day before the election, I, I don't care why would they, why would, it, why would there be any time restraint on removing somebody who's ineligible to vote, who is committing a felony if they vote from the voter rolls? It's, it's, it's just an absurd smokescreen. How concerned are you about illegals voting in this election? Look, I think one of the most effective things that has been done by the campaign is the Spanish language billboards and messages that you are committing a felony. Uh, if, if you do this, 
you know, you, you are not only an illegal when you cross the border, you can be deported uh, instantly if you are found voting as a non-citizen in an election. Now, have, has that been missed? Have the Democrats managed to file that in the, in the memory hole? Um, I'm, I am concerned, Mike. And look, uh, as somebody pointed out yesterday on my show, the level with which they respond tells you how worried they are. If you're three weeks, I mean, it, it's hard for, for even a Democrat, you know, a rational, sane one to say, you know what, Biden DOJ, you're suing to put illegals back on the rolls three weeks before the election. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Um, I, I'm concerned, but I'm not as concerned as people who think I, I had a call a call up. Uh, and I, I just completely, you know, unloaded on them because I asked them, so what are you doing to, to you know, make sure we save the country? And he said, uh, my wife and I are voting. And I said, excuse me, your wife and you are voting. That, that's your answer to saving the republic after what we've witnessed for the last eight years. If you think your vote counts and is in of itself enough, you're a child. If you don't think you have to do a little bit of what the Democrats do and organize others to vote, help them to get to the polling stations, you are not committed to the salvation of the republic. And, and one last thing that's a kind of cultural thing for conservatives, I know we want to vote on election day. It is an utter travesty that we have a, an alleged you know, putative Republican in the governor's mansion in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and we've been voting for three weeks, Mike. We, we have 45 days of voting in Virginia, which is obscene. That's not a, an election day. It's not even an election month. It's an election month and a half. However, this is what we have, and we have to deal with it. And I'm telling everyone I know, you must vote early, because this is, you know, let's put illegals to the side for one second. If all of us vote on election day, President Trump loses. It's, it's simply that you know easy, because they've been voting for a month and a half. You don't know what's going to happen on election day. You don't know if you're going to get the flu, break a leg. Your kid's going to have to go to hospital. You do not know what's going to happen. And look at what happened to Carrie Lake in Arizona. The GOP-run polling stations ran out of printer cartridges on the day of the election. Hundreds of people were waiting in line. And what did they do? They went home. They just didn't wait for the printer cartridges to arrive from Staples. So we, we, can't, we, if we don't like the rules. I get it, whether it's ballot harvesting, vote banking, early voting, it, where it has not been changed democratically by the state legislatures. We have to roll with those conditions, and every single one of your listeners has to vote early. Why? The second you vote early, the GOP is told, President Trump's campaign is told, which means they pull you off the list as a solid vote, and then they can concentrate their man hours and their money on the soft propensity voters who haven't voted yet. Knock on their doors, give them a phone call. You are saving the president millions of dollars and thousands of man hours if you get organized now. This is what I'm worried about, Mike, that we don't mobilize early enough to win. But we can if we go to TrumpForce47.com. Uh, a couple things first. I just want to make sure everyone picked up this week's British slogan or uh, 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 <laughs> word that uh, Dr. Corky is. He said, you may have to go to hospital as opposed to the hospital. So pick, <laughs> make sure you pick up on that. Also, the insult you gave to that gentleman or that caller, uh, you're a child, is a powerful insult. And if anyone wants to motivate me to action, that's all you have to say. Many years ago, I was talking to a friend and I told him that every night, I have a bowl of Frosted Flakes before bed. And he looked me in the eyes and he said, a lot like he actually sounded, kind, of, kind of sounded like you when he said, he doesn't normally sound like you, but in my memory, actually now that when I remember this moment, I, I, maybe I add your voice to it. He goes, you are a child. And I haven't had a bowl of Frosted Flakes since. So that, that's a motivating uh, insult. You are a child. That's uh, funny. That's super funny because I loved Frosted Flakes 
And was it St. Paul? I'm going to quote St. Paul. And I left those childish things behind. Um, I, I was a child <laughs> exactly. like Frosted Flakes. And I haven't had a bowl of Frosted Flakes in I don't know how many decades. That's right. Oh, man. I, I remember them being good, but I can't. I just can't do it because I'm an adult. Um, this uh, So Trump yesterday was at the Economic Club of Chicago. Yeah. With oh, my the gosh. That was incredible. Chief. <laughs> and Kamala didn't go. So just to make the quick point that Trump didn't do the 60 Minutes interview, but Trump didn't do the 60 Minutes interview not because he was scared of 60 Minutes, but because they would edit it in an unfair way. Kamala didn't go to this because it was live. Right. <laughs> There's the difference. Uh, this is one 20-second clip of the hour that I think sums it up pretty nice. The Wall Street Journal now, I'm meeting with them tomorrow. What is the Wall Street Journal now? They've been wrong about everything. So have you, by the way. <laughs> You've been wrong. About you're it. trying to turn this. You're trying to turn this. You've been wrong. About no, you're trying to turn. You're trying to turn this into debate. There's a, there are it's business a people. There no, are business you're wrong. people. You've been wrong. You've been wrong all your life on this stuff. What does that say to you about Donald Trump? Because that's not him being mean. There's something there. What is that moment say to you? That's a warrior for the truth. I mean, look at who he's talking to. Just juxtapose President Trump, who literally took a bullet for America. And, and Micklethwaite, the editor of, of Bloomberg, who was the editor of The Economist. People forget, I and mean, I, I, I'm posting the whole hour-long discussion because it's, it's a real testament to who President Trump is, that he'll go uh, you know, into the lion's den in Chicago to talk to the editor of this complete propaganda prop, you know, arm of the Democrats, Bloomberg magazine. And, and this, is, this is the same uh, Jonathan Micklethwaite who ordered the staff of Bloomberg not to criticize or write any negative articles about Michael Bloomberg when he was running for the presidency. I mean, that's, that's the interviewer. That's the quote-unquote journalist who actually banned the magazine from writing anything neg negative about his boss because, hey, he needs to win. And, and the most interesting thing, you heard it there in that clip, but it happened again and again and again, is the audience in a Bloomberg event in Chicago <laughs> were, were, were yeah. giving... Micklefoyd actually says it sometime, I don't know, at one point, he says, you're getting a standing ovation. They were clapping for him as he was pointing out that propaganda whores lies in front of a live audience god bless president trump yeah what is, yeah that's such a good point yeah well, the audience laughed they loved it yeah. this was not the association of black journalists how did were those a bunch of trump like people in the audience or there's no, there's no way the economic chicago. club of chicago well, look, we do know juicy smollett told us it is magaland i mean don't forget chicago is magaland <laughs> that's at, at right. three three a.m outside the subway at minus 20. so who knows maybe chicago <laughs> has turned into magaland <laughs>